Hello everyone. In this instructional video, I will be covering the Complete Ventilation System, or CVS, as designed for amateur Newtonians and similar reflector telescopes. My apologies in advance for this rather dry reading, but there's a lot to cover today and I wish to keep the video short. Since this is an active system, it seemed a video would best capture the essence of the concept and what you are currently viewing is a portion of the system in action. So what is the CVS? It represents a holistic or system-wide approach of ventilation versus the more traditional separate methods. First and foremost, it offers uniform temperature acclimation of the primary mirror, and it does this without introducing astigmatism or overcorrection. It offers concentrated boundary scrubbing on both sides, along with enough airflow volume for optimal cooling. It can keep both the primary and secondary fog-free, dew-free, and without a dew heater. And by using its design in concert with operational techniques, it reduces the acclimation or accumulation of dust. We'll be covering uh, familiar territory today, like mirror cooling and boundary scrubbing, along with some less known concepts like an outflow column, heaterless secondary defogging, air curtain, etc. This video is not by any means a study in fluid dynamics or thermodynamics, however a few aspects from both fields will be touched on where applicable. This design has been condensed into the simplest form possible. It is suitable for ATMers as well as DIYers who would like to modify a commercial scope. By using foam, wood, plastic and other materials and by switching to radio fans and optionally adding a good preferably HEPA type air filter, it is a moderately easy and low cost project. This video contains guidance to assist in a successful implementation. All right, this page is a, a list of constraints that I have assembled uh, for selecting a candidate telescope. I'm not going to read it here, but you can pause it and uh, read it at your uh, leisure. Right, this is a list of operational procedures that, uh, if implemented, will uh, help you to get the best performance out of the system. Again, you can pause this uh, and read it at your leisure. This simple diagram encapsulates uh, much of this concept. It's a side view of a mirror in a shallow box. It depicts components such as a uh, filter, uh, fans, a plenum or a simple chamber, edge insulation, a nozzle or a ring, and of course the airflow uh, pattern shown in blue. Note that the mirror box itself is all, uh, also functions as a plenum. So it's actually two plenums here, the first and the second. This design has been reconfigured into a much more compact arrangements for creaky based and tube type scopes and I'll show you a couple examples. Here the uh, design has been adapted to a tube type telescope such as a uh, sauna tube or whatever and you'll notice it has the same elements but in a slightly di different configuration. Filter, fans, plenum, the director ring and a view here from the end. And here is a slightly different version from the first, which uh, compacts the fans and the plenum into a single unit uh, to fit uh, uh, a variety of uh, Kriege style scopes. Uh, it can have a deep mirror box or a shallow mirror box, and, and it can be square or round, it really doesn't matter. Okay, what we're looking at here is the uh, back of a um, of a Dobb mirror box. Only the fan and the filters are important. Uh, equivalent versions can take many forms or shape. So in this case we have a HEPA filter here on the outside and we have some radio fans on the inside. Uh, this is just an example of many many possibilities. And by the way while I'm here this uh, stick will be used to demonstrate air movement and is made with a piece of uh, toilet paper 
So as you can see, I've spared no expense for this video. These uh, old school telltales are better than smoke for the video and will help you visualize the various movements. Plus, I won't have to wear a respirator and sound like Darth Vader. Okay, this is an example of a hollow plenum or a chamber uh, with a perforated uh, diffusion battle baffle in its center. It is located inside the mirror box. It is made from a lightweight plastic foam and its shape can be also vary greatly depending on the scope structure. Its first purpose is to turn the output of the radio fans and direct the airflow for an even 360 degree dispersion. Its second purpose is to minimize cold spotting of normal expansion glass by reducing velocity in the central region. The uh, baffle airflow merges with a much larger flow exiting it at a higher rate from the round perimeter port. I'll show you that now. Here in the center we have a lower amount of airflow from the perforated baffles. At the, around the edge here we have a much higher velocity. As you can see it's 360. This circular outer port here is designed to, uh, to project the air up and outward at an angle for good impact against the back of the uh, mirror. All right, it's a two-step method, which means that we're getting basically two rates of flow, a low rate out of the uh, baffle here and a higher rate out of the uh, circular port. Uh, and time restricts me uh, from going into a deep dive into the insulated properties of glass itself and the nonlinear transfer of heat versus velocity. But during a testing uh, of the system, a 100 millimeter fan was mounted in a typical fashion behind this, uh, in this location behind a 24 inch blank. And the velocity was measured. It turned out to be greater than eight to one difference in speed of air from the edge of the fan to the edge of the mirror. And just as a side note, uh, again, some configurations may not require a diffuser or even a plenum to accomplish this task. Okay, this shot is to show the orientation in relationship uh, to the mirror and the typical uh, support cell. When assembled, the, uh, uh, the perforated diffuser clears the mirror by about a half inch in the center here. The um, baffle, the perimeter port, and the obstructing cell components, meaning everything we used to hold a mirror up, uh, all these uh, components here, um, combined to present a uh, completely uh, turbulent uh, airflow pattern. This means that heat transfer from the mirror's rear boundary layer is by kinetic interface. And we'll revisit this a bit more when we discuss the uh, front side. This is a foam perimeter band installed for edge insulation around the edge here. It is not glued on, rather it's in, held in place with a slight uh, no-slip grip. The f force required to hold in place is about the same as a sheet of paper lying against the side of a mirror, just, just a sheet of paper. The idea is simple. The perimeter ideally should be insulated uh, from the, and, and insulate from the airflow to make heat removal more uniform across the entire mirror. This counters edge overcorrection for normal expansion glass, especially with falling temperatures. Here is another view of the thin foam uh, that was used as means to isolate the mirror edge from the airflow. A high R value is not required. And as previously indicated, this insulation is not a requirement for low expansion substrates. Okay, this segment is to show you the uh, mirror cover in operation. Currently the uh, vents are closed, the fans are on, there's no airflow. Turning the knob will open the vents. See the uh, 
they're now exiting in force. So these telltales will show you the direction of flow, but they don't give an indication of system volume. So while we're here, um, I want to show you with a uh, simple inflation demo, uh, the volume. Again, no expense was spared and a garbage bag was sacrificed. It works out to be about one cubic foot per second at maximum speed through the system, including filter, turns, and vented cover. This diagram is the same as the one shown earlier, but the mirror cover is on. Note that the airflow pattern in the box and above the mirror is identical whether the cover is on or not. Later when you see how radio cooling and scrubbing is accomplished, you'll understand why it's important to exhaust the air from above the center of the mirror and not the side. This diagram here illustrates the airflow from a bird's eye perspective above the mirror with the uh, arrows indicating uh, the general velocity of the air. Uh, there's also some regions here that are uh, indicated, laminar, transitional, and turbulent, and those will be discussed uh, more in a bit. This is the location of the director ring. It and the uh, mirror itself form a uh, annular nozzle or gap and this here is a sample of the material. It's made from a foamed plastic and you'll know that it comes down to a, a fairly sharp point but not razor sharp on the bottom edge here uh, and that's important for the uh, airflow. All right, here's some uh, ex examples of the uh, director ring. Uh, these two here, the center and the right one, are acceptable. Uh, the one on the right is the one that I used because it was easier to fabricate the director ring using standard woodworking tools and techniques. Uh, however, the one in the middle will work equally well. Uh, the one on the left side uses a standard flat baffle and does not function nearly as well since the uh, airflow tends to direct upwards and away from the mirror and uh, it results in poor contact with the surface and, and poor coanda. Okay, you might be asking how is this system uh, configured? What are uh, some of the parameters? Uh, these two pages uh, will give you the information you need to make the basic calculations. Uh, item one is a CFM requirement through the system. Item two is a velocity requirement for the system. Item three here is the uh, distance the ring needs to be away from the mirror. The fourth is the length of the gap. And the fifth is the uh, distance of the uh, ring above the mirror and I've given some uh, information here to help you calculate uh, these uh, parameters. Okay, now on to the results. I'll start with the telltales placed over the mirror and the fans off to show room ambient as a baseline. Fans are on and the airflow can be visualized across the mirror from edge to center. Carefully note how the flow starts at the edge and quickly builds towards the center as fan RPM and pressure increases within the mirror box. I'll repeat this a, full, uh, a couple of times. Again, note how it builds from the edge to the center of the speed. Okay, the telltales can be placed in any orientation with the same results, offering good proof of the radial uh, aspect.
as you can see, the mirror center mark was receiving good flow and it exhibits uniform coverage with no stagnant or dead areas. We'll look, zoom in just a little bit here. And we'll move to the side. Move to the side. Okay, the smoke test demonstrated that a uh, smooth, fast laminar flow begins at the edge and gradually transitions into a random slower central region. This can be ascertained here somewhat by carefully studying the direction of the tails. Small fast movements bending inwards near the edge giving way to slower more random oscillations in the center. This radial and symmetrical concept was specifically conceived to minimize astigmatism from uneven uh, cooling that can arise from various sources, including combating uh, uneven cooling from cross breezes. Although the uh, front and back are both radially cooled, the front is very different. The back has turbulent flows and the velocity roughly equaled by design. We were able to do this because we can build stuff behind the mirror. However, building stuff in front of a mirror is not quite as practical. So instead, we start with a laminar flow at the edge or nozzle, which travels inward for about one third of the uh, distance of the mirror's radius. The flow begins to devolve into a transitional zone, also known as Reynolds. Finally, it devolves further to become completely turbulent in the central region, albeit at a lower velocity than the edge. Please note that in the CVS system, laminar flows are used solely as a transport means to the center and its heat transfer characteristics. It is not useful for modifying a boundary layer optically. Optical transparency of these flows is accomplished solely by elimination of the boundary layer through full acclimation. I mentioned earlier that turbulence-based heat transfer from the boundary layer was by kinetic interface. This is different from a laminar flow's heat transfer, which is friction-based. Therefore, if the entire mirror face was subjected to only one or the other type of flow, then the greater velocity at the edge would mean that the edge would cool much faster than the center. However, the transfer rates and velocity between flow types are inverted, and I've used this to our advantage. Where the velocity is highest nearest the edge, the transfer rate from laminar flow is low. And in the center, where the velocity is lowest, the transfer rate from turbulence is high. So despite the velocity difference, a remarkably even heat transfer rate occurs, and this without building any stuff over the mirror. Next, the smoke test indicated a good Kawanda effect with boundary scrubbing. Here's an extreme close-up of the uh, telltales for your inspection. If you look at the very tips, like right here, you can observe their rapid movement at uh, roughly one and a half millimeters above the mirror's surface. Still above the boundary layer, but close enough to illustrate. Now I'm going to vary the uh, fan speed for a better perspective of the system's in-session performance. We're of course on high now. I'm going to set the fins at a speed about 50%. Now it's down to about a third. Now it's down to about a quarter speed. Now it's approximately one-sixth speed. Anything below about one-third speed here on this setup uh, is inaudible outside. As you can see, um, it's still uh, uh, offering uh, boundary scrubbing uh, to the center. And I'm going to back out the camera here so that you can get an eye of you know, total coverage.
Okay, now I'm going to uh, uh, relocate the telltales to give you a better visualization of the shape of the flow from the nozzle and the area immediately above the mirror. So I am now about uh, two inches above the glass. As you see, the uh, telltales in the end are uh, not doing anything. However, the central region is quite active. And uh, about one third of the way in, you can see the telltales are starting to um, move. And that's uh, showing the area of uh, transition or rentals. As I move up, I'm about uh, four inches above the surface. And as you see, the uh, taper has continued. And now we have a strong central region. Uh, now I'm about eight inches above the mirror. And as you can see, the uh, column is formed uh, in the center. And I call this the outflow column. It's a uh, stream of air that's centered and perpendicular to the mirror. Uh, the co the uh, converging airflow from the annular nozzle creates a central region of higher pressure, which forms the outflow. Here it's about six inches in diameter. And now I'm up to about a foot uh, above the mirror and you'll see how it uh, slowly expands as it reaches the uh, uh, secondary. So now we're looking at the outflow column immediately below the secondary at the top of the scope. As you can see, the uh, column is very much intact and it is breezing the face of the uh, secondary very well. Okay, we are now above the secondary. I'm gonna rest the stick on this nut. And as you can see, the uh, airflow is still continuing past the secondary and out the top of the scope. The air uh, hits the uh, secondary and of course goes around it. Uh, however, a, uh, because this is a large secondary, a disproportionate amount of air also gets blown towards the uh, uh, focuser. I'll try the other way here. I can confirm, uh, at least from my experiences, that good secondary defogging and anti-do properties exist. Uh, by the way, you may have noticed the secondary is equipped with a uh, typical uh, electric uh, dew heater. It was installed three years ago uh, when originally constructed, but has not been utilized since. So a single fan or set of fans not only accumulates the uh, or, uh, acclimates the primary, but it also uh, can keep the uh, secondary uh, dew and fog uh, free. Uh, particularly if a shroud is used to keep the column centered. Uh, the defogging is partly because of air movement, but also from byproduct heat from the fans. Since no electric motor is 100% efficient, some heat is generated. In this example, the airflow is heated to a couple hundredths of a degree above ambient. The column takes this uh, slightly heated air and blows it up and across the face of the secondary. And in my opinion, this gentle defogging is probably the best we could ask for as heating elements uh, have a risk of distorting the secondary flat. And uh, unlike the boundary layer distortions, heat plumes, and currents most of us have experienced, the uh, minuscule temperature gradient of the column in an acclimated system doesn't affect the, uh, optic, uh, the image optically. There's another unique uh, CVS benefit that comes in the form of an air curtain. This phenomenon should not be underestimated in its ability to separate the mirror surface from dust, particles, and even some insects in the environment. 
It's like what you've experienced walking into a store entrance or a cold room where a strong fan separates the inside air from the outside. For those who wish to study this in more de detail, it is described as a non-recirculating type air curtain against a solid or single surface. And finally, typical above the mirror fan arrangements have been used to blow down, uh, blow air down or across the mirror to uh, enhance scrubbing and cooling. Often we'll see a row of fans along the side, maybe some fans in the corners or even once centrally suspended for the gray few. Um, however, they all invite more dust and contaminants. Uh, this is partly because attempts to filter them have a minimal effect due to atmospheric mixing and because the air, which is a dissimilar material moving across an insulated material, in this case glass, can generate a mild electrostatic charge which further attracts dust. This includes a light natural breeze or even a backside fan. Of course, the CVS is not immune to this effect, but the difference here is the air that surrounds and is in contact with the mirror. Excuse me. Is filtered. <laughs> so, in summary, the CVS counters astigmatism and overcorrection from uneven cooling that emanates from multiple sources. It provides vigorous boundary scrubbing on both sides. Uh, for fast heat transfer. It offers gentle and primary secondary defogging. It provides physical protection and storage and while acclimating. And by combining these features and procedures along with filtered air surrounding the mirror and the isolation of an air curtain, the system can significantly lengthen intervals between mirror cleanings. So that in a nutshell is the complete ventilation system and I want to thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you.